Welcome back. It's another episode of Cage Side. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Be part of the gang. Be part of the club. Be part of, of the Philly hits different movement. Uh, listen, we have tons to talk about today. Look at the power this woman has. Oh, oh my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So stick around till the very end because we are ending with fireworks on a plane. There will snakes on a plane. I have had it with these motherfucking snakes on this motherfucking plane. Now there's mics on a plane. I want to eat his children. That is a terrible dad joke. Not the most exciting weekend of UFC fights, but there is a really big showdown in boxing. If I'm not on my A game, then that man's going to knock me head right off my shoulders. We're going to talk about that. Stick around. It's a short and sweet episode. Everybody strap in. My boy Chris is back on the show. What's up, Chris? What's up? I'm ready for this blockbuster this weekend. Jessica Andrade, come on. Come on. You are so sarcastic, and I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, fair to say, not the most exciting UFC card of the year. Fair to say, yes. I mean, you know, every now and then we get these crappy fight nights. You know, it's this is part of being a fan, but you know, this is what I like to call. Um, UFC keeping up with their contract uh, requirements. They must put on a certain amount of fights, and this is one they must put on. So, you know, listen, when it comes to um, putting, crafting together these fight nights, not always do they, you know, do they hit it out of the park. Um, this is one of those. I by no means am saying the main event is not worthy of a, of a, of a person to tune in for. But it really just doesn't have much at stake. So the storyline really isn't there. The emotion's not really there. If you want to watch fights, listen, there are fights. You can watch the fights. You can enjoy the fights, right? Uh, there are a couple of names in there that we'll break down that I think are, are worthy of tuning in. Uh, but bigger uh, of an event going on this weekend, it is Tyson Fury's last fight. Perhaps, I doubt it, but it's perhaps his last fight. Uh, how much How much boxing are you watching these days? And are you tuning into this one? Um, when it comes to boxing, I watch the big ones, you know, like I watched Errol Spence last weekend. I watched Triple G and Ryan Garcia two weekends before like I watched the big ones. Just like, yeah, so it's been good recently. Like next, next week we have Shakur Stevenson, Oscar Valdez and the woman. And then after that Canelo. So I watch like the big names, but I'm not like, too yeah, into it, so. yeah. Well, you know, unfortunately boxing's going that way. Right. So, um, you tune in for the big names and that's kind of always been the case, but back in the day, uh, you, they weren't competing against such stacked fight cards from somebody like the UFC or Bellator. Uh, so right now I think there's just more to watch. So boxing, unless there's a big, big person, uh, fighting people aren't tuning in and they don't stack the cards the way the yeah, UFC the does. So, shit. Like, they're it's only the main shit. Event. Yeah. Right. Right. Um, but listen, heavyweights, um, is one thing, but Tyson Fury is another thing. So that's, that's a huge fight, yes, uh, true. that we're going to have to, to see. And by the way, I have. We'll, we'll get to it, but I have a bad vibe <laughs> about mm -hmm. this one. And you know I go based on vibes that are not yeah. always uh, correct. But Aljermaine Sterling last weekend, though. That was a good vibe. Aljermaine Sterling. Um, yeah, man. What did you Victim. think? I mean, we don't have to break down that because you know it's been some time already and we don't have yeah. to talk about it. But were you happy with that result? I think it'd go either way. It's not a ro it's a coin flip fight. I mean, I would rather Jan have won, but I think it's not a robbery. Right. I want it to be more decisive, man. For for Sterling's sake. Um, yeah, same, same. You know, but it is it was what it is. Listen, uh, honestly, I don't think Jan looked that impressive. So let's give the credit to Aljermaine for making him not look uh, his best. So mm -hmm. that means he did some he did some work. So, uh, dude, I'm ready to jump right into clips. Are you? Let's do it. Yep. All right. So this is. I'll, I'll let you talk about it after the clip, but I will say this. Out of this whole fight card this weekend, this is the one guy that I'm actually pumped to see fight again because of his last performance. Yo, I mean, that's energy. That that I remember watching that fight live and and not knowing who he was and thinking this is you take my money right this is everything i asked for in a fight 
energy intensity to the last fucking minute beast mm -hmm. like he he really was feeling it and we could feel it uh and he's back again this weekend what do you think about that yeah, I mean, or tell me more about it that's just super hype that's charles jordan in like last 10 seconds of his last fight he's just screaming throwing wheel kicks and then he throws that push kick or the front kick with like so much force knocks the guy over starts screaming. i mean that's just like you you can't you you have to love that i mean He's fighting again this weekend against Lando Venata, you know, who's a veteran, been around for a while. So and that'll probably be another scrap. I see them, them both just going after it. So, so that, was, uh, that was some gladiator type shit yeah. at the end. And I felt bad for the other dude because not, o not only was he getting it handed to him, um, to end like that is <laughs> that's pretty embarrassing. Yeah, that's a, yeah, that's a tough way to end. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but this fight that uh, this weekend, he does go against somebody with more experience, with a bigger name, and I think it'll be a scrap. But it'll be a good test for him, and and to see if he can put it on him the way he did in that last fight. Uh, so my pick of the of the night for a fight to watch, for a fight to tune in for, is that one, Jordan. I, I have a feeling yeah, he has some losses in it. I think he has four losses in his record, yeah. um, and one of them. Came by, I think Feely. There's some some names in there and stuff. So, and it was a while ago. I I think this kid is gonna is gonna start um, getting some traction uh, as far as popularity goes. And he's a fellow Canadian, correct? Yeah, he's Canadian. Yeah, so he's like probably pound for pound one of the most exciting fighters in the UFC. So there's pretty much zero chance this fight this weekend is boring. But I would say, you know, if he can just he does have some losses. You said he's not, you know, like this undefeated guy coming up. If he can just, you know maybe just find the balance between being super exciting and just maybe being a little more effective, efficient in there. I think he couldn't, uh, you know, get into those rankings. And I'll say this, listen, Philly ruined Canada's hopes for an NBA title. So I uh, just thought I'd throw that out there. So oh. you know, Sixers did their, their job. So maybe it's up to Jordan to, to represent Canada at least because sorry guys, you're not going anywhere. That game uh, last night, MB, you see that? Ooh, oh with the three. I mean, come on. Come on. By the way, Sixers are making me proud because I talk some shit on the Sixers uh, at home, at least. My son's a huge fan. I was a huge fan in the Iverson days, but they've always done this thing where they do so good and then they disappoint you uh, in, the, in the most important moments. And I, I was feeling it yesterday. When you're watching this, it'll be two days ago. But either way, um, I could see their shift in energy. Uh, and they weren't they weren't willing to lose. And I fucking love that. Uh Great and beats just a monster hardened in that combination maxi like all these guys are just really really fucking killing it so yeah philly what's up um let's go to our next clip jake if you watch it if you want to throw down if you want to step in the squared circle with me i'll i'll oblige i will oblige i'll do it it sounds like fun it gives me a reason to train to get in shape you know give me a few months you know lose a couple of pounds and let's go, baby. No problem. If you want to fight a 43 year old guy with one eye and no knees, hey, buddy, let's go. Send location. <laughs> I like Bisping. I, you know, that's the right guy you want to fight with from the UFC if you want to possibly win, right? And if you want to have a big media mm -hmm. kind of presence, because he's he can hang in the shit talking as much as anybody. Um, and he has all those factors with the whole eye thing. And here's the thing, though. I don't think he would get a license with the fucking eye. Yeah, I think they would have to go somewhere not like a New York or California. They have to go somewhere like a Dubai or something. But yeah, yeah. Bisping, that would be a weird sight. Listen, that's not going to happen. Uh, that's that's Jake Paul being smart about who he targets to keep the buzz going with the UFC community uh, or MMA community. I, I guess the next clip, maybe let me play the next clip and then we can regroup. Or is the next, uh, hold on. The next clip oh, is Fury. Is Fury. All right. So before yeah. I thought it was another Bisping one. So the whole situation is that everybody from the MMA community is saying, no, you got to fight Anderson Silva. That's your guy. He's licensed. He's boxing. That's his new career. Uh, and that's the guy who can stop you anyway after doing the number on uh, Chavez Jr. So. Uh, what are your thoughts on Jake's Paul's bullshit with spending, wasting our, our energy when we scroll through our social media feeds talking about Bisping? You know, honestly, I wouldn't even be shocked if that fight happens. Like, I think Jake Paul definitely wants that fight. He knows Bisping, Bisping will sell it. Bisping, he can talk shit. He's a good talker, good storyteller. He knows that that would do good numbers. Bisping versus Paul. I like Bisping as well. I, you know, I think it might happen. I think he could probably get licensed somewhere. 
but I I don't want it to happen. I this thing is 43. I think he has like a shivel down knee, one eye. You know, I, I don't think it would go too well for him. I would rather see Silva because Silva, you know, he's a much better boxer. He's slick. But I wouldn't be shocked if it happens. But it'll be I don't know. I don't want to see it. Can I be honest? Neither of those two fights are gonna happen in my opinion. Um the fight against Bisbing, it that's as much as Bisbing's gonna do a really good job at selling it. That's for the for the kids out there, like for the for the YouTube watchers. Yeah, they don't know who the fuck forty three year old. Like you know what I mean? You you just fought um uh what's his what's his face uh Woodley. Woodley, Woodley is as old as you're gonna go in the UFC roster to create a an impact. Bisbing, dude, what are you gonna challenge fucking Joe Rogan next? Like what? Do you, it doesn't make any sense. Um, and it would be embarrassing. To have him go in there with no knees and no eyes, it, like that's just—it sounds yeah. fucking terrible. Uh, and then Silva, no upside for for Paul either because he is older. Yeah, yes, he is yeah. better, but he's older. He, he's a he's a he, his his career has passed. Like Jake Paul has to fight a known boxer. Yeah, Tommy Fury, oh, perfect opponent. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. let's let's move on from this UFC shit. Uh, unless you're targeting a massive name like a uh, Masvidal, and that's not going to happen, right? So yeah. let's 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 kind of move on from from that world, uh, or for sure go into the MMA community, uh, or not the MMA community, the MMA world by jumping into like a Bellator fight or some shit. Um, either way, Jake Paul, move on. You can move on. Let's get into boxing. Yeah, I've done everything I need to do now. Um, I've made more money than I can spend in a million lifetimes. So I've got nothing more to do. This is my final fight, capping it off at the Capitol Stadium. 100,000 people, another British opponent to fight against. And that'll be me. You might see me in a wrestling ring, in WWE, or a, a crossover fight with Francis Ngani, but this is me with competitive boxing. I'm done. I've been in this game 14 years, and I've been punched to pieces over the years as yeah. well. I've had it hard. I've had a long, hard career, and I um, finally got the just deserves out of it at the end. What do you think? What do you think about that? I think, I mean, I would lean probably, he's probably not done. I think it would just not make sense for him to retire now because he has a massive fight next. It would be the winner of Yusik AJ. I think that's happening in June or July. So the winner of Fury White versus the winner of that fight would be huge. So I think it would, be, it would make much more sense to retire after that one because he would be, get that massive fight. He would be undisputed, heavyweight champion. So to retire now, like one fight early, makes no sense. He's 34. He's not super old. But I mean, he could, I mean... I would lean no, but you know he does have family kids, so I wouldn't be like absolutely shocked. But I think probably not. I, th- I think we see him retire after he fights the winner of Usyk AJ. Yeah, I agree. Uh, I agree because this fight that he's about to have is against somebody who he's had beef with. It's against somebody who he's been asking for that fight to prove himself. It's against somebody who's dangerous yeah. in his hometown. And to be honest, if he loses that fight, he has to fight again. And if he wins, then you're right. Then it's like, well, I just beat the big guy that I was talking about. Now you have to try to get the AJ fight. Makes perfect sense. Um, I don't think he retires. I, well, I think what he does is he says he retires. He fights Francis Ngannou, massive money, then goes back and finishes his his, his deal with boxing. Let's take a look. He keeps talking about Ngannou, yeah. Yeah, of course. And so does Ngannou. It was about 2011, 12, whatever. Um, sparring is sparring, you know. I think I was preparing for... Um, David A. I could have been preparing for Klitschko. I can't really remember if it was 15 or 13. And, and Dillian came in and he did his job along with the rest of the guys who was there helping me prepare for a fight. You know what I mean? It's not about, oh, I beat him up in a spa or he beat me up in a spa. We was there working together and we, we were good friends together. We went out, we went out for a drink. We, we ate together. We slept together. We, he was like, he was whoa, a part whoa. of our team. No, 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 huh? bro. Oh, bro, shit. We, I didn't sleep together, bro. I'm sorry, man. Bro, we didn't sleep together, bro. Why? I'm sorry. In the, in the similar surrounding, but not together, bro. Relax. Yeah, so there was no like, it wasn't like animosity, like him versus me. Every person, every every guy I bring into into my training camp, I treat him with respect. I look after him like they're one of my own family. I don't disrespect anybody. Any of these training partners who ever come, I never disrespect them. I treat them like my own family. I look after them as best as I can. I think it was about two. Well, so they slept together. That's what we got yeah, out of that one. I mean, That's cool. Yeah. Revelations so, there. Yeah. <laughs> Tyson Fury just letting it all out there. Um, I don't like the fact that there's friendliness in this fight, a fight that should be more charged. There should be more negative animosity, which Tyson has coined as part of his press conference act with every other fighter. 
what the hell is happening here? That's I, I don't know. Well, I know Dillian White. He he didn't show up to the press conferences early, like a month ago. You know, he's been very quiet. So I think I think Tyson Fury knows he's not going to get any reaction out of him or any draw. He's not going to trade with him in the blow. So he's like, eh, screw it. I'll just be nice. I don't know. But I, I guess they probably do respect each other, though. You know, deep down. Yeah. So yeah. Maybe he just doesn't want to fake it. Yeah. Well, but, I guess if you can't get the guy to to go against you on a, in a negative way, you just say that you slept together and and, and yeah, get some laughs. <laughs> what do you think about that fight, though? What do you think? You said you had a bad feeling about it. I have a bad feeling about it. I think Tyson Fury should be able to outbox him, um, and probably beat him in a decision. That's kind of what my my if I'm trying to be smart about it, right? That's like what I would say. Um, but there's just a weird feeling whenever you know. I always go back to my Trin Tito Trinidad days, and when he came out with a completely different mentality, energy, vibe, it just feels wrong. And the fact that this is at home, there's that pressure, just have a bad feeling about it. And by the way, if Tyson's losing, he's losing by knockout in yeah, impressive right. fashion. So I'm going to go ahead and say that Tyson Fury wins by decision. Um, but there is a slight chance that I think that that can be a uh, different and Tyson could get stopped. That's my that's my very nebulous prediction. Yeah, I mean, Dillian White is you know top five heavyweight in the world. He's really good. I mean, Fury he getting dropped by Wilder, and Dillian White probably is a better boxer than Wilder. So I wouldn't be shocked if you know he drops Fury early. I think that could probably happen. But I think Fury will probably get up. He got up from Wilder. He can get up from Dillian White. So I think he might have. He probably gets dropped early, maybe. But I think he should probably come on in later rounds, get like a late finish. So I'm not as worried. I don't think. Okay. All right. Well, I think you're. Uh, it should be fun, though. Should I was gonna fun. say, I think what you just described is worth a watch. <laughs> yeah, <it's laughs> seeing Tyson get dropped and come back and win it. Uh, yeah, that's, that would be beautiful. All right, let's end the show with um, <laughs> who should be fighting Jake Paul? Jake Paul, <laughs> um, Mike Tyson. You know, it's funny. I was listening to his episode with uh, Joe Rogan, and then I went on social media, and this is the first thing I see. It is so funny, not funny, but it's so funny to see the beast inside the man still. Let's take a look. This is George Sunday to Mike Tyson, bro. This shit crazy, bro. Mike Tyson. Bro, this guy lit, man. He over here rapping with Tyson. Mike Tyson trying to give us some shrooms. <laughs> you don't know how to act. Tyson looking out, man. This shit crazy. This shit never gave you his money. Hey, 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 Mike, Mike, come on, let's go stop that, let's lose Got blue, mid flight, boy just got beat up by Mike Tyson, turn that way, yeah, he got f***ed up, just trying to ask for an autograph, man, I don't know what happened. This is going to get the most attention out of me uh, as far as a breakdown goes. Let me go full screen to, 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 to break this one down. Okay. This guy is an asshole. Um, at least that's my, my, my interpretation of his behavior. Not only do I not want that guy sitting next to me or in a plane with me, he's sitting behind Mike Tyson, torturing the fucking guy because he knows it's Mike Tyson. Right. So he's doing everything in his power to basically rally the pit bull, you know, uh, that's chained up in the yard. Jet blue is my next question. Why is Mike Tyson not in first class and in, in a jet blue flight? What the fuck is that about? And then the other asshole across who's his buddy, not only is antagonizing, supporting the behavior, right? Filming it, then goes at the end to say, my boy just wanted an autograph. Yo, those two fucking people. Uh, I think Mike Tyson was provoked 100% and is in the right. But I would never want to be in a car, a lot car with Mike Tyson trying to punch me in the face, which is basically that situation. Uh, that guy's face hurts. I'm not sure what happened if Mike Tyson got arrested afterwards or not. The details are still coming out about it. I don't know if they were mid-flight, takeoff, land. I don't know. Maybe you know and you can fill me in on this, uh, Chris. But... Don't fuck with Mike Tyson, okay? I don't care how old he is. He will fuck you up. It doesn't matter who you are. The guy already probably was trying to just, you know, he'd rather smoke a joint with you 
then then tend to to have to do this. So he probably gave you a warning and you just kept on going. So that's on you, brother. All right, let me take myself out of here. All right, that's I said my piece. What you got? Yeah, I totally agree. I mean, Mike Tyson, he seems like a really nice guy. I really, I'm a big fan of him. I think if he went up respectfully and did some, Mike Tyson would have been very nice, would have obliged, gave him an autograph picture. But he was being annoying as fuck. You know, he was like, he was whining behind him, you know, making like weird comments, like right up in his face. It's like being so annoying. Yeah, you poked a bear long enough, you know. I'm, come on. Come I, think on. He, like, can, I think he got what he wanted too. I think he was, want, he wanted that. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, Dude, because if he if he would have done that against a a Jersey Shore guy, the Jersey Shore guy would have done the same shit. But you know, you wouldn't have because it serves you no purpose. But when it's Mike Tyson, now you have a story, maybe some okay. money coming your way. Hopefully not. That guy's a fucking tool. Um, like he was he, totally deserved. He was totally provoking him. Like, come on, let's be real. You Everyone. know, who, you know who I feel bad for? The guy next to him trying to get Mike to stop. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That is not a fun place to be trying to stop <laughs> Mike Tyson from beating up the guy next to you. Um. Well, that would have been an if it was if it was mid flight, that was an awkward ride home. I'll tell you that much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you do? Sit there and bleed while Mike Tyson probably just puts his headphones back on and continues to, about his business. Uh, I wonder if he was coming back from uh, recording with Joe Rogan on that one. Yeah, I'm not um, sure like where like it wasn't the flight duration or where he was going. Yeah. yeah. Enough, well, maybe Mike Tyson has a fight announcement coming soon. And this was just a preview. <laughs> Uh, all right, brother. Any parting uh, comments, words, thoughts before we wrap this guy up? Um, nothing really. You know, UFC. There's some good fights on there. It should be exciting. The main event should still be exciting, even though it's not really a big fight or too crazy of a fight. But excited for Tyson Fury. You know, shout out Mike Tyson. I yep. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> J I, I, I won't go through the whole show without mentioning that Jessica Andrade, the number one uh, women's strawweight. Um, yeah, she's a beast. She's yeah, a beast. fighter against Amanda Lemos, who's number ten in the division. It is gonna be great. It'll be a Andraj always puts on a great performance. Um, but if this was a pay per view, you are not getting my money. That's all I'm just saying. Uh, all right, brother. Listen, if you're here for the first time, subscribe, follow us on Instagram, Cage Side Show. Um, Go watch our back catalog of some of the best fucking interviews with MMA fighters, with uh, with uh, viral sensations, with all sorts of people. Um, the, con the content continues. Uh, we're carrying on bigger, better things here at Cage Side Show. Subscribe.